Uh, what up nerds, it's Jason here from Custom Cans and today we have the Beardynamic MMX 150 gaming headset with fancy microphone and ting for playing games. And uh, last video we had a look at the MMX 100 and initially I thought these were basically the same headphones. You know, these are the analogue version, these are the digital version, they look pretty much the same. But it turns out they're actually quite different and there's something weird going on. I'm going to get a multimeter on them and we're going to find out what that is because for some reason on my rig these ones are much harder to drive than these ones, like the 150 seem to be coming out louder. So they should have the same driver, but we, we'll find out what thing up one. So we're going to open these up, we're going to have a look at how they're made, we're going to give them a quick test, run some graphs on them, that kind of thing. So if you're interested in these headphones, you know, you're trying to choose between the two, you're seeing if they're worth the extra, uh, it might be worth hanging around and having a look. Well, I've just spent like, sorry, I had to stop the video there while I kind of rigged everything up, and I've just spent about 20 minutes measuring these because I was getting some really weird inconsistent readings like yesterday I did some initial tests and I'm like oh these are very different headphones but they're not as different as I initially thought it turns out that um they're very sensitive to how you place them on your head if you haven't got them like if you, you need them quite far back to get the best out of them if you got them pushed forwards a little bit the sound is, is a bit off because I was a bit confused because the graphs that I took on the MMX100 they weren't so great, um, but they sounded pretty good. But it turns out I probably had them on the rig slightly wrong. And when I put them on my head, obviously, you know, with comfort and stuff, you can figure out where they're supposed to go. So they seem very sensitive to, to where you put them on your head. But there is still a noticeable difference in the sound between the two. The MMX 150 do have more bass. They probably have a slightly flatter response overall, if I just get up the, the results here. So you can see the green line is the MMX 150 and the orange line is the MMX 100. And you've got, you've definitely got a fair few decibels in the bass range. The treble's pretty similar and the MMX 100 have a bit more of a, a hump around the mid-range. So they are going to have a slightly different sound signature. So if you like a bit more bass, maybe the MMX 150 might be a bit better. But as I said, uh, moving them around on your head to get the best performance seems to be seems to be a thing. But it's quite impressively flat. You know, they're flat all the way down to like twenty. You know, they're pretty flat down to the twenty hertz kind of range. So yeah, it's a nice flat kind of linear analytic response. So whereas with when, when they're tuned for music, you might get sort of a, a bit of a dip in the middle. These ones are pretty flat across the thing with a with a dip about four k. 4k in there but yeah they're pretty pretty flat across the board so quite quite impressive but yeah just interesting with the same driver they sound quite different and so another thing that was that's confusing me is the fact that this has got the analog cable that plugs in through the USB-C because I've seen quite a few other headphones like wireless headphones and stuff like that and they'll have a USB-C for charging or updating firmware and things and then they'll have a separate socket for the analog so this is actually sticking analog through the through the USB-C without a DAC because these I don't think have got a battery in so it's just an analog signal going in and back out so yeah it's very very interesting I don't know how they've achieved that um, I don't know much about the USB-C standard perhaps there are some analog pins in there but um, yeah that is quite interesting actually I thought while we're here might as well do a mic check so this is uh, coming off the internal mic on the MMX 150 it's pretty good I suppose that's what you'd expect like it's a bare dynamic microphone they uh, they make good mics so uh, if nothing else, uh, it's worth it just for the for the awesome microphone. So, let's have them apart and have a look inside. So if I just remove the microphone, put pads on these, unscrew, lefty loosey. Inside, if you watch the MMX100 video, the MMX150 looks like it has exactly the same driver. I think they've probably got the same 32 ohm driver, which should be pretty easy to drive from a laptop or games console or whatever. Obviously these ones are USB, so you can just plug them straight into into a USB socket on your console or PC. Just undo these here screws. Okay, and inside here, OMG, there's a lot going on. Look, <laughs> got a lot of stuff in there. So I suppose it's got all the circuitry for the DAC. Yeah, another thing that's quite interesting, uh, these have got little microphones in there, which the MMX 150 don't have. What that allows is to use the circuitry in there to give it a transparency mode. So a bit like you have on wireless noise cancelling headphones, you can set it so that it will let in external noise. So let's say you're some kind of sad gaming loser who lives in his mum's basement and you need to listen, you need to know when the pizzas are coming. So you can put on the transparency mode, you've been gaming away, when you hear your mama call you, say there's pizza ready, get upstairs, get straight back on it. But obviously when she's a bit naggy and she's all like, clean up the basement, you can, psh, block out all external noise. So, 
It's a nice, a nice feature that I haven't seen on many games in headsets. I think that's quite a useful thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the hinges apart and then we'll have a look inside, see what's in there. If you missed out on the MMX 100 video, go back and watch that. But uh, the exciting thing about that was when we got inside, the motherboard actually said Tiger 50. So originally it might have been in the Tiger range and I'm quite interested to see if these were also supposed to be in the Tiger range or not. So let's see if it says anything on the motherboard on this one. Oh, yep, yeah, nearly forgot, obviously. Uh, give us a like, this is all expensive and uh, I, I like, I, I trade in the money for the likes. So yeah, <laughs> give me a like and that'll keep me motivated and keep me doing this stuff. And it is also well worth subscribing because we've got a couple of really good giveaways coming up. Uh, some things that you just cannot buy. We've got like a one-off pair of Hi-Fi Man Sundara clothes back, which we're giving away and another thing that I can't say right now but it's super exciting and totally unobtainium it's this kind of thing that people that give their left nut to get um so uh, yeah yeah get subscribed anyway back, back to the thing let's get this out oh another screw yeah a lot of screws in these two um quite unusual for a bear dynamic headphone they they're normally quite lean on the part count. So that's the air cut removed from the headband. Now then this will have extra wires going through the headband because you've got a feed from the microphone the other side. Got this open. So here you can see you've got the same driver with a separate enclosure there and a base port which links to a little hole just in there. And what might be an interesting experiment, uh, which I might do at the end, is try covering up that hole and see how that changes the frequency response because I suspect if you're getting too much bass you want to trim that down without using an EQ. You could probably just put a bit of tape over that base hole and it would it would reduce that a little bit. Can I get the motherboard out now? I'm going to have to remove everything else. Come on. Oh, there's another screw. Gosh. Gosh. So many screws. So many screws and so many wires. Okay. That's the money shot. Ugh. Oh, what have we got? Um, what does it say on there? Oh no, that board's not labelled. Ah, oh, we'll, ne we'll never know. We'll never know. As you can see, you've got quite a lot going on on the board there. So you'll have the actual DAC or ADAC, which will be converting the signal from the mic and the headphones to digital and back again. Then you'll have a little built-in amplifier to power the, power the speakers in there and a load of other stuff. Uh, a load of other gubbins, so you've got the microphone uh, down here, we've got a microphone for the transparency mode. So again, it'll control all that. You've got a little click wheel here, which you press in and move around to increase and reduce the volume and also put it in the transparency mode and mute, that kind of thing. So let's just get that out. Come on. Oh, little white clear piece of plastic there. So uh, I think this has got a little light on it for when you're doing it and also on the microphone. I think the microphone's got a little LED in there as well, which will show you when it's muted, which is quite a nice, quite a nice feature because sometimes you're like, oh, is it muted? I don't know. Ooh. All right, cool. So here we go. So this is your little microphone for the external sound. This is the click wheel. So basically it's a scroll wheel, goes up and down, and then on this board here you've got a little button which it activates when you press it in, so it's on a little uh, hinge. So when you press that, it hinges, presses this button on the main board. This is the socket for the microphone, and then you've got the USB-C socket there. So obviously with these, because they're much more complicated, repairing them is going to be tricky. Replacing the driver shouldn't be too bad, that's just two wires soldered on there. But if you've got to replace this main board, there's quite a lot of solder joints that you've got to you've got to replace on there. But that's just the way it is with this uh, this kind of electronics. Just because it's a more complex system with the extra microphones and things, it's not going to be as easy to repair. So that's that's what's inside them. As you can see, it's a bit more complicated in there than the MMX 100. If you want to see how the headband's made, we pulled that apart in the MMX 100 video. I don't think there's any need to to repeat that. You can go and have a flick through that. But they seem pretty well put together. You can definitely tell that these are kind of designed in Germany, made in China. So it's a kind of Chinese German hybrid because uh, a lot of the parts are you know very bare dynamic and chunky like the clicking mechanism the headband that kind of stuff 
but also but the the way that these ear cups put together with hundreds of screws and tiny little solder joints is a bit more Chinese. If you look at something like a Bose headset, you're more likely to see all of this stuff socketed so you can remove it on little flexible wires and stuff, whereas on a lot of the Chinese active noise cancelling headphones and things that I've seen, they tend to just have hundreds of wires soldered everywhere. Uh, it's just a different way of different way of building it. I think it's probably a bit more cost effective to do it like that if your labour's cheap. So it's going to take longer to solder all this, but the actual sockets themselves are quite expensive. So it's, it's one of those one of those things that on this it turned out it was probably better just to solder everything directly, as they're made in China, where the labour's a little bit cheaper. It's not that much cheaper anymore, but it's a bit cheaper. Cool. So uh, if you've got any any questions about these, stick them in the thing. I'll try and answer them. I'm not a huge gamer. I was just interested to see how they're made because we were thinking of customising them potentially, doing them with like people's custom logos, that kind of stuff. So we just wanted them in so we could pull them apart, see how they're made, see if they're suitable for that kind of thing. I'm not sure about these ones because they're so complex. There's so many screws and so many wires to unsolder and solder again. It, it's probably not worth it for us, but it was worth getting them in just to check out. We might be able to print directly on the air cups or something like that. But yeah, they look like they're pretty well made gaming headsets. Response is pretty flat, so it should be good. You know, you're going to be able to hear all those audio cues, that kind of stuff. Comfort wise, I found them very comfortable. I've heard some people with big ears find these press on their ears a bit, but for me, it has. They felt, they felt very comfortable. Nice and squishy, the pads on there. So overall, I think they're I think they're a nice gaming headset. They seem very well priced. I would say, because of the transparency mode and also the slightly, you know, if you want a bit more base, these might be better, the 150, because it's not that much more expensive and it does make it a bit easier. I'm running these off a fancy amplifier and that kind of stuff, whereas often the onboard sound card on computers isn't great. So running it through USB and then you'll have a decent DAC and stuff in there, I'd say it's probably probably worth it. And if you're not running it off a separate amplifier or you haven't got a decent sound card in there. Yeah, so any questions, stick them in the thing. As I said, it's well worth um, subscribing because we've got a load of cool stuff coming out, a few giveaways, that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, just leave me a message in the, in the thing. Just say hello. Say hello. I'll welcome you aboard. I try and answer all the try and answer all the things in the what's it's.